give the Lord a hand clap of praise, knowing that he could have let me drown during this pandemic, but he took us in. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise, because he is worthy of our praises on this morning. To Reverend Gordon and our worship leader, Reverend Summers, and to like uh, Reverend uh, Sterling Dowling in his absent, and also like you with joy, we Thank God so much for them. To the officers and members of this Williams Chapel official board and those that are just coming in and just checking things out, we thank God so much for your presence on this morning. To our first lady uh, and first children in the absentia, one is here. Uh, we, we thank God so much for them and we thank God so much for you. We greet you in the joy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, let's give uh, the Charles Artists and this technology team. I don't know, I feel like the choir is here this morning. We thank God so much for his intentionality on this morning. We want you to know that there is a word from the Lord. Amen. I don't want you to look at your name. I just want you to repeat after me. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. We have to do things a little different now. You know that high five your neighbor and look at your neighbor and all of that kind of stuff. We're going to have to ease back into that. But we thank God so much for you on this morning. And it's found in the book of Luke. The book of Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 11 through 19. That's Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. And it reads thusly. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee, and he was going into a village. Ten men who had leprosy met him. They, they uh, stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourself to the priest. And he did wait. They were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God. Repeat after me, praising God. In a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus said, ask, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said unto him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you, the King James Version said, Whole has made you well. Amen. Repeat after me, totally grateful. All right, say it like you mean it. Totally grateful. Hallelujah. Grateful. Let us pray. Most gracious and everlasting God, we do thank you, Lord, for this time together. Now, let's the Pastor Rivers and all of you that your word may come forth with authority as we come in this place to worship you live and on conference call. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Have your way now. Let's of me and all of you that your word will come forth with authority. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Totally grateful. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. How about singing with me? Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Wave your hand and say, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Somebody say, he's been so good. He's been so good. Lord, you've been so good. You've been so good. Yes, 
you have, Lord. You've been so good, so good. Been so good. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I don't know about you this morning, but I am totally grateful. Why? Because there is so much, so much, so much family for us to be grateful for on today. For the Lord has been mighty, mighty good to us. The Lord has brought us from one conference year to another conference year. And I bet one out of ten of us didn't tell the Lord, thank you. The Lord has brought us 16 months after, in, in, our, in, in our seats after worshiping online and on conference call. Somebody need to be grateful on this morning and tell the Lord, thank you. The Lord has allowed technology to continue worship on this on, on during these last six months. And we were able to worship online and we were able to worship on Zoom. Somebody need to be grateful this morning and tell the Lord thank you. Better yet, the Lord has shielded and protect us through another year and not let any hurt, harm, or danger come upon us. And I venture to say that many of us didn't rise to be grateful this morning and tell the Lord, thank you. The Lord has kept us from the death angel. If you can wave your hand this morning and if you can stomp your feet on this morning, the Lord has kept you on this morning from death angels over these last 16 months. Better yet, the Lord woke us up this morning. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Didn't he start you on another day's journey? Yeah. Somebody needs to be totally grateful on today. My brothers and my sisters, we serve a God that sits high and looks low. We serve a God on today that inhabits the praises of his people and reminds us in his word the reason we were created. We were created to give him all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. We were created on today to give him total praise and for us to be totally grateful. Is there anybody out there on this morning? Is there anybody that's listening on conference call would just give the Lord a total praise, a total praise on today? But yet, 90% of us, according to the word on today, don't recognize the fact that it was the Lord, and that's a shame, that created us. It was the Lord that creates our very being on this morning. It was the Lord that gave you that family. It was the Lord that gave you that job. It was the Lord that put the very clothes on your back. Yeah. So today and every day we need to be a part of that 10% that give God the honor, the praise, and the glory. Is there anybody out there have reason to give God this morning, hallelujah, to be totally grateful on this morning, then you just need to just stand to your feet and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I glorify you. I glorify your name. Totally grateful. As we examine our scripture on today, as we examine the historical context of Luke, we will see that Luke was a physician and possibly a Gentile, which give him reason to focus on the Samaritan that we are talking about on this morning. Like Luke was not one of the 12 disciples, but the Bible said that Luke probably was one of the 70 disciples. Today, Luke tells us the story. Amen. You said, Pastor, why are we hearing this story on this morning? It's because we have a lot to be thankful for. Yes. Yes. And God's words 
is the most accurate mathematical equation that you can put together. He's telling us that only 10% of us will give God praise. I know I'm not talking about anybody in here. And I'm not talking about anybody on the conference call. Amen. 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 But the majority of this world yes, don't realize there is a God. So as we exegete our scripture on this morning, we see that, that, that Luke tells us the story about Jesus. Yes. He was on his way to Jerusalem. And the Bible said that he was traveling between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into the village, hallelujah, 12, uh, 10 men was on the other side of the road. Way back there with, with Chief is at, with, with Dr. Keller is at. Way back there. But they saw Jesus. Amen. And Jesus saw them. Amen. And they, they waved at Jesus because they were what? Lepers. They could not get close to anybody. You had to ring a bell and let them know that you were a sick person. But how, you, how many you know Jesus came to heal the sick and not those that are well? The Bible said they cried out to Jesus. Master, save us. Save us. And immediately, Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. Jesus could easily say, your sins are forgiven. And your body is healed. But Jesus wanted them to go to the priest because the priest was the health inspector. And as they were running to the priest, their skin became like baby skins. And their lepers were healed. All ten of them were healed. God has brought all of us back together to Williams Chapel one more time. Amen. But the Bible said only one turned around and ran to Jesus and prostrated himself in front of Jesus and said, Lord, I thank you. I give you total praise. I give you total grace. I give you total honor. Jesus said, well, what happened to the other nine? Hallelujah. Only one came back to give God the praise. And the Bible said he was a Samaritan. Jesus said, go, go. Your faith, hallelujah, like we were talking about in church school this morning, has made you whole. Is there anybody out there on today? that would be totally grateful to the Lord on today. Are you totally grateful on today? Amen. If you are totally grateful, hallelujah, then you will do these things. First of all, when you are totally grateful, it takes our eyes off of ourselves and focus on the true and living God. Just think about it. When you tell someone that I'm grateful for you, that I am grateful for the Lord, you are not thinking about yourself, but you are thinking about others. So when you are grateful, number one, you take your eyes off of yourself. Repeat after me, you take your eyes off yourself. Well, I can't hear you. Secondly, when we are totally grateful, hallelujah, it reminds us that we are not in control. Repeat after me, I'm not in control. But we serve a mighty God. It keeps us humble. It helps us to recognize the fact that we have much, so much to be thankful for. We have so much to be grateful for. I heard the hymn writer say, count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what my God has done. When we are totally grateful, it reminds us that God is the giver of every good gift that you have, that car that you have. Amen. And some of us got some fine cars, nice houses, beautiful family. God gives you 
through all of that. When we have a heart of gratefulness, when we have a heart of thanksgiving, it leaves no room for a complaining. It just the time when you hear folks ask them how they do it. They're talking about Christian folks. Amen. They complain about this and they complain about that. But when we are totally grateful, Oh, hallelujah. We praise God through the good times. We praise God through the bad times. Is there any praise in the house on this morning? When are we are totally grateful, we realize that Jesus paid it all. Oh, he paid it all on Calvary. I am grateful that Jesus came down to this earth. He walked among us. He talked among us. He was spat on, called everything but a child of God. Jesus was nailed to that cross. Aren't you grateful today that Jesus was nailed to that cross, laid in that grave for three long days, but early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, he arose from the dead with all power, in his hand. I don't know about you today, but I've had some bad times. I've had some good times. I've had some hills to climb, but I won't, I won't complain. Are you grateful this morning? If you're grateful this morning, stand to your feet. Give God the praise. Give God the honor. Give God the glory, because he's worthy. I said he's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. We are think of the goodness of God. And all. He's done for us. I am totally grateful. Are you totally grateful this morning? That we need to walk out these doors. And we need to tell others about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Amen. We ask that you remain standing as we open the doors of the church. Brother Charles, if you can give us some recorded music, we will extend. Amen. Is there, amen. There's no recorded music for that? Okay. We're going to ask that you, if you don't, are not a member of this church or do like to become a member of this church or if you are on conference call we want to extend 